One of my subscribers was doing some plumbing work on his house one day, joining two PVC pipes together using PVC cement, when a dollop of the PVC cement dropped into a puddle by his feet. He noticed something very strange start to happen, so he spent the rest of the day adding droplets of PVC cement to the puddle. He even sent me this video. Isn't that crazy? See how those dollops of PVC cement are spinning around and moving in strange ways. I managed to recreate the effect under lab conditions here in my studio. It's surprisingly difficult to film a transparent thing floating in a transparent thing. The key is to use extreme lighting angles to take advantage of the differences in refractive index. But anyway, here it is. It's surprising how jerky the motion is, actually. It seems to spin in fits and starts, and then it will jerk around the bowl. It's odd. I think I have an explanation for this behavior, but first, PVC cement is actually really interesting in itself. It's not glue, it's cement. That's an important difference. PVC cement is made of PVC, but it's PVC that's been dissolved in a solvent. So when you add it to your pipes, that solvent actually dissolves the PVC in the pipes a little bit. And all the while, this solvent is evaporating. Once it's all gone, all you're left with is PVC. And that's the difference. Like If you glue two things together, what you end up with is two separate things with glue in between. But when you join two PVC pipes together with PVC cement, what you end up with is one continuous piece of PVC. It's essentially welding. By the way, this isn't how you join PVC pipes together. This is just how I've done it for illustration purposes. If you're going to do some plumbing, you'll need some kind of joint. The PVC cement goes between the pipe and the joint. I tried to make my own PVC cement by looking at the ingredients online. Basically, I added some PVC pipe to the main solvent that I found uh, online, methyl ethyl ketone. I had mixed results. I don't have a paste so much as a squishy, crumbly lump of PVC. So why does PVC cement behave in this weird way? Well, it reminds me of a couple of phenomena that I've seen before. The first is the effect of dish soap on water. Look, you can create a tiny little cardboard boat and propel that boat across the water using dish soap. You add the dish soap to the cavity and it zooms off. That's driven by a difference in surface tension between water and soapy water. So water has this high surface tension. All that means is that the molecules are holding onto their neighboring molecules really strongly. Whereas soapy water, the molecules uh, aren't holding onto their neighbors really strongly. It's much lower surface tension. And when you've got this gradient of surface tensions, low surface tension here, high surface tension here. Well, where the molecules are holding onto each other strongly, they retract away from the low surface tension area. So that low surface tension area expands. That's easier to see with this classic demonstration where you add pepper to the surface of water and then you dip your finger in the middle and you've got soap on your finger. The pepper suddenly rushes out to the sides. It's this surface tension gradient that propels the boat forward. So perhaps that's what's happening with the PVC cement. Maybe the solvent is reducing the surface tension of the water. We can test that in the same way. Grind some pepper onto the water and add a dollop of the PVC cement. As you can see, nothing happens. So that's a bit of an explanatory dead end, but never mind. The other phenomenon that it reminds me of is actually from an exhibit that I saw years ago at the Science Museum here in London of dry ice floating on water. Actually, this footage isn't from the Science Museum. It's from a science center in Switzerland called Technorama. This piece was created by Sean Laney. So thank you to Sean for creating such a beautiful exhibit. And also huge thanks to Martin Fisher who allowed me to use this footage of the exhibit. Actually, dry ice is more dense than water, so it will sink if you give it a chance. Though, depending on how you manufacture it, you can make it quite fluffy, so it will float. And actually, if you make the pieces small enough, it will float anyway, because 
of the surface tension of water and because you have this cushion of gas that the dry ice is constantly creating. That's because dry ice is solid carbon dioxide and it turns from a solid directly into a gas. It skips the liquid phase, that's called sublimation, and it sublimates at about minus 78 degrees uh, Celsius. So when you add dry ice to room temperature water, it sublimates incredibly quickly. You get this huge volume of gas coming from a very small space. In other words, you get these strong jets. And because these bits of dry ice aren't symmetrical, these jets of gas most likely won't line up exactly with the center of mass of the dry ice. So you end up giving it some angular momentum. These blobs of dry ice end up spinning. They also end up zooming around on the surface of the water because, well, there's asymmetry in the sizes of the jets on each side as well. So perhaps something similar is happening with the PVC cement. Perhaps the solvent is evaporating so quickly that it's creating jets of gas. Or perhaps it's leaching into the water incredibly quickly, creating jets within the water. We can test both of those hypotheses by adding markers to the air and the water. So for the water we can add styrofoam balls and see how they move in the presence of PVC cement. And we can add fog from a fog machine to the air to see how the air moves around the PVC cement. You actually don't see much with the styrofoam balls. I think that was a poor choice of marker. Turns out though that the pepper I was using earlier works really well. You can definitely see the water moving like jets away from those blobs of PVC cement. This one's stuck against the side of the bowl and you can really see how random the jets appear to be, firing off at unpredictable intervals. As for the fog from the fog machine, I can't really see any movement at all there, so gas jets probably don't have an effect. So the motion of PVC cement in water is most likely driven by the expulsion of solvent into the water. I spoke to a chemist friend of mine, Andrea Seller, to try and get a bit more insight. He actually feels that more research is needed. Like it's not obvious what's going on on the chemical level. His suspicion is that the main solvent, methyl ethyl ketones, are hydrophilic at one end and hydrophobic at the other end, a bit like soap. So when it's expelled onto the surface of the water, the hydrophilic end will point downwards, the hydrophobic end pointing upwards, assembling into a kind of raft that pushes outwards. So that's an interesting idea, but still, that's not known for sure. Another couple of mysteries, uh, the first one is, if you add the PVC cement to the water immediately straight from the pot without it being exposed to air for very long, then these fins burst out from the blob, sometimes forming wings on either side, really strange. The other mystery is the jerky motion of the blobs. Okay, this is just pure speculation, but one possibility is that as the solvent evaporates from the surface, it creates this slightly harder crust of more solid PVC, but then that crust will shrink as more of the solvent leaves, so you end up with cracks appearing, and every time a crack appears, then jets of solvent leave from the cracks, so you end up with this chaotic jerky motion. It's pure speculation, but, but there you go. From at least as young as six months old, children are able to distinguish between animate things and inanimate things, and they can do it purely based on the way the thing moves. Like if you show a child a dot on a screen that moves through a parabolic arc, then the child will recognize that as an inanimate object that is following the laws of gravity. But if that dot starts to move in ways that defy gravity, the child will ascribe intention to that dot. It's an animate object. In other words, we have these two different models in our brains for analyzing the motion of things that we see in the world. So while we can rationalize that these blobs of PVC cement are inanimate, the way they move squarely falls into that model in our brain that tells us, no, no, this thing has intent. This is an animate object. And I think it's this conflict between these two different parts of our brain that make it so fascinating to watch. A huge thank you to the two Martins, Martin who sent me the dry ice footage and Martin who sent me his footage of PVC cement 
acting weirdly in a puddle that inspired this video you're watching now. NordVPN have their Black Friday deal live already and it will carry on all the way through to the end of actual Black Friday, which makes no sense from a calendar point of view, but there it is. Uh, if you order two years now, you'll get four months absolutely free on top of that. NordVPN is sponsoring this video. I've talked about VPNs before, so here's the question. Do you need uh, a VPN? Well, you know, <laughs> It's a, there's like a spectrum of people, there's a spectrum of needs. I think you have to decide for yourself after doing a bit of research. I think it's a good idea to do the research at the very least. Um, from a security point of view, like if you use Wi-Fi hotspots a lot, then you need to be vigilant about times that you're entering personal information like names, addresses, birthdays, passwords. You have to check that the website you're on um, is encrypted. You need to think about what's happening outside of the browser as well. Um, like is your mail application, is that encrypted? You know, if, if you think, well, yeah, I'm happy to be vigilant about that stuff, then fine. But if you want peace of mind and to not have to worry about those things, then maybe a VPN is for you. That's why I use a VPN when I connect to public Wi-Fi hotspots. I just don't want to have to think about it. And I don't, I, you know, it's like, it, it covers my bases, like the, the, in case there's some application that I've installed that's like not encrypted or something. Like that. I just don't have to worry about it. Um, you also get this uh, very specific type of anonymity with a VPN, which is geographical anonymity. Like, you know, uh, this video isn't available in your country. You may well have seen that before. You can get around that with a VPN. You can just appear to be in another country using a VPN. Like here in the uh, EU, certain websites just don't work because they haven't had the time to become GDPR compliant. It's reasonably complicated for large websites. So they just serve up a blank page that could just, just says, sorry, you're not, we're not available in the EU, uh, which is annoying, except it's not annoying for me because I can get around it with a VPN. If you're thinking about trying out a VPN, then take a look at my link, nordvpn.com forward slash Steve. That's where you get the Black Friday deal. The link is in the description. Check out NordVPN today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.